but I'd like you to walk me through how fingerprints in blood and footprints, if there are any, in blood and fibers that are found on top of bodies as opposed to underneath bodies can be so incredibly significant for forensics investigators. Uh, it certainly can. And if, uh, let's just take, for instance, if this perpetrator was ungloved, uh, you have to understand that by the time that they finish with the very first person and they don't have a glove on their hand, either one of them, there will be transfer of blood evidence to the next victim, perhaps. Certainly, uh, if they're utilizing the same weapon, uh, which, you know, has kind of been implied that they're using this, this kind of robust military style knife that they keep referring to, you're essentially, and this is kind of an odd term, but you're essentially inoculating every subsequent uh, victim with uh, the trace evidence that comes from the victims prior to that. So you'll have things like commingling of blood and this sort of thing, and certainly DNA sample. Uh, it's hard to imagine that some trace elements were not left behind because this will in fact be a bloody mess. I've worked many, many sharp force injury cases over the course of my career. And it's almost as if they will dip their hands in blood and transfer it along, steadying themselves perhaps on guardrails if they're making their way up staircases, touching walls, mm. steadying themselves, any kind of surfaces, and also on the other bodies uh, where they're placing their hands. They have to leverage themselves many times. Think about it, Ash. If yeah. they're saying that these individuals were killed in their bed, then that person would have to place a knee a hand on the bed, point of contact, and order to utilize the knife. I have just 20 seconds left, but I have to ask you, Jim, about the locked door. These kids couldn't get, you know, couldn't determine why their friend wouldn't wake up. So clearly, they couldn't get through the door to open it and see the bloody mess mm -hmm. that was inside. How would a killer get in, stab and kill one or two victims, and get out and leave a door locked? Well, I think it may be an attempt to delay discovery, and it actually worked. It would indicate to me, behaviorally, that there may be a connection between the offender and that victim because they were trying to delay discovery. If there's no known mm -hmm. connection, then there's less of a likelihood that they would waste the time to delay discovery. It's just incredibly mysterious. Um, Jim Clemente and Joseph Scott Morgan, thank you. I'd like to have you both back because there's still so many unanswered questions. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.